Hi everybody, consumption is the total spending by households on goods and services in the economy. For countries like the UK and the US, consumption is a massively important part of aggregate demand. In the UK, for example, it accounts around 66% of aggregate demand. In the US, it's something similar to that. Remember what the equation is for aggregate demand. Aggregate demand is C plus I plus G plus X minus M. We in this video are going to look at reasons why consumption can increase or decrease for reasons independent of the price level. So nothing to do with the price level, other reasons. So these are all factors that can then therefore shift aggregate demand right or left as a result of influencing C in the aggregate demand equation. Before we get started, something to bear in mind is to use the phrase the marginal propensity to consume in your chains of analysis here. So when you're writing long paragraphs as to how these factors can influence C, using the marginal propensity to consume will make you look amazing and more professional in your writing. The marginal propensity to consume is just the willingness of a household to spend any extra income that they earn. Right? So it's something that you can use throughout. I'll be using it, use it as I do basically. But also make sure you mention the multiplier effect. Anytime that AD is shifting for any of these factors, let's say, you can always bring in the multiplier effect to bolster your analysis. Uh, watch my video on the multiplier effect to understand it and then to know how to use it in your analysis. So what factors can affect consumption uh, independent of the price level? Well, the level of real disposable income, where real means adjusted for inflation, and disposable income is income left after taxes and national insurance have been paid. So um, one reason why disposable income can increase is maybe if income taxes have been cut in the economy. So cuts in the marginal rate of income tax or increases in the tax-free allowance, which is the level of income um, you're allowed to earn before taxes are paid, before income tax is paid. So if you increase the tax-free allowance or if you cut the marginal rate of income tax, um, that is going to increase the level of real disposable income which will therefore increase the marginal propensity to consume and therefore increase the level of consumption in the economy. If interest rates are cut, for example, then the cost of borrowing falls and the rate of return on saving falls. If the cost of borrowing falls, then that increases the incentive for consumers to go and borrow money, because it's cheaper to do so now, and to spend that money on expensive items like cars, like houses, like furniture, like jewellery, for example, and that will increase consumption in the economy. If interest rates are cut, the rate of return on saving decreases, so that reduces the incentive to save, and instead, uh, any income that's generated might go into consumption uh, as a result, and that increases C. Uh, a lot of uh, UK households will have mortgages, right, the way in which they can finance buying a house, and monthly, uh, mortgages have to be repaid back, so there are monthly repayments on mortgages, and um, a lot of mortgages in this country are variable rate mortgages or tracker rate mortgages where the level of repayments or the interest repayments are tracked to the base rate in the economy, to the central bank interest rate. So if interest rates are cut, it means monthly repayments could fall for households who have variable rate mortgages or tracker rate mortgages, which means monthly they have more disposable income to be able to spend in the economy, increasing C in that way. You also must bear in mind the availability of credit. If the availability of credit is low, then this can reduce the impact of borrowing. This can reduce the impact of uh, lower interest rates um, because simply banks are not willing to lend if the availability of credit is very, very low. Um, so that's something that can stop this happening. It's something else which will affect C uh, in the aggregate demand equation. Consumer confidence. If there is high consumer confidence, consumers are going to have a higher marginal propensity to consume. What can affect consumer confidence? Well, it's job prospects and the level of unemployment in the economy. So don't be vague in your writing and say, oh, you know, expectations about the state of the economy. That is true, but then be more specific what you mean by that. Link very much to job prospects and the level of unemployment. So if people expect that they're going to get promoted soon or that their job prospects are very, very strong, they're going to be more likely to spend money. Their MPC is going to be higher. If the level of unemployment is very low, then individuals will feel very bullish in their job. They'll feel very confident in their job prospects and are therefore more likely to spend money and not uh, find a reason to save necessarily at that period of time. Asset prices. Now this is very important. Asset prices linked to wealth. How wealthy people feel. The wealthier people feel, 
the more likely they are to spend money, the higher the marginal, the, the higher the marginal propensity to consume. So what do we mean by asset prices? Well, things like house prices, share prices are a very good example, bond prices. If these are going up and individuals hold such assets, they feel wealthier, they're more likely to spend money. In countries like the UK, there is a very strong correlation between asset prices like house prices and, and share prices and the level of consumer spending in the economy. So that links to, to wealth and wealth links to consumer spending, how wealthy people feel in this case. Their income hasn't actually changed, but they just feel like they are more rich, hence why they are more willing to spend their money. And also the level of household indebtedness. If there is a huge amount of household indebtedness in the economy, families living in huge debts, then individuals are more likely to save their money as opposed to spending their money just in case things go bad and they need to repay those debts quickly. They'd rather save their money to have uh, a pool of money in the bank to then pay off debts in case things go bad, i.e. they lose their job or something like that takes place or interest rates rise. So the greater amount of household indebtedness, the greater amount of saving and therefore less consumption taking place in the economy. So these are all the main factors that can affect consumption. There are other factors too, like the age structure of the population, like weather you can also argue um, as well, which can affect consumption. But these are the main ones. The key thing for you is to be able to develop a chain of analysis linking to consumption increasing or decreasing and therefore aggregate demand increasing or decreasing using such phrases. Thank you so much for watching guys. Stay tuned for the next video where we're going to look at savings, the determinant of savings.